Ahoy! New World is going to get some interesting changes soon. And there was also a strange announcement from Scott that may have been just weirdly phrased and he may have just been misspeaking when he said that, but I think it's worth talking about. But first, there are a few new mergers coming up. In EU, Hercules is merging into Canis, and in US East, Orion is merging into Octans, and Pollux is also merging into Octans. People have pointed out that this is low population servers merging into other low population servers, so don't expect a massive population afterwards, just a more stable one. I think this is because in the past, players from smaller servers have complained uh, when suggesting that they could merge into big servers because then they don't have their small server feel anymore. So my guess is that is why Amazon is taking this path. Personally, I prefer it when they merge those servers into bigger ones. With something that Scott said today, there may also be another reason. One of the questions the devs were asked was, once again, why there is no new content until May. Uh, Scott said, well, there is not no new content, he's misspoken in that regard, but May is, I quote this directly, when the big update is gonna come. And that's confusing to me. I thought May was going to be when the big announcement is going to come. Unless by the update means he's updating us on what's coming afterwards. But it sounded more like there's actually a change coming in May already. That would of course make for a much more interesting timeline. And if they, for example, actually end up announcing cross-play with consoles at that point, then obviously having some not crowded servers would be a good idea. So really no telling at this point, but it's going to stay interesting. As for content that we're getting until then, he mentioned the group finder, the 10 person trial that we're going to get, some new artifacts, the completion of the main story quest update, the year of the dragon event, which honestly, if it's what is on PTR, is not very much, it's not going to keep people busy for very long, uh, and some new rewards for existing events. So all in all, I still think this looks like a very slim timeline until May. Now the question was if the devs will change the respec cost from gold to Azoth, from coin to Azoth. They said they talk about this a lot, uh, but there is a problem with that. Currently, respec is the third biggest gold sink in the game, making up roughly 12% of the gold sink. And they are wondering what's a better experience, this or the potential inflation that would be caused by taking away the gold from respecs. They will make a decision on this in a few weeks. They first need to understand the downstream impact, and they think that warrants a lot more thought. I do agree with the issue here, but I believe it would be better to increase other gold sinks and take the gold sink of respecking out entirely, uh, simply because it's not really even. The cost disproportionately affects new players or players that want to play multiple different roles, whereas a veteran that always plays the same role will have significantly less cost in comparison, even though they may have more gold. And as such, I would prefer Azoth here and just more gold sunk in other ways. It would also make it easier to tie gear sets to respecs in the future, which I think is a huge convenience factor. Somebody wanted to know if we'll see improved replayability of old content. The devs are aware of the old raid situation, with the rewards just not being very good. Uh, this is on their radar, but they don't have any timeline. They think the sandworm is kind of only worth doing for Dark Matter, and especially the hatchery is just not up to par at the moment. This is somewhat of an interesting statement as well because the hatchery was originally meant to be a seasonal trial, so it wouldn't really matter if it's up to par if it's removed next season, so maybe that is no longer the plan. Maybe that and the other 10-man raid will exist at the same time. Maybe they figured it's actually smart to have a few more pieces of raid content in the game, even if one of them uh, will definitely need an overhaul in terms of challenge and rewards. Somebody asked if we will get more named gear with two perks locked and then a random third perk if it's from expeditions or a third perk option that you can choose in the gypsum kill. They agree that these items are good, they like them, they like that system, and they like the locked three perks for certain items as well. They like that there are some specific named items that just have three specific perks. Uh, they also really like the grind or kill choice. So it sounds like we'll see more items in the future that can random roll a third perk, but that you can also simply go to the kill and upgrade. If you enjoyed the video so far, consider subscribing, clicking the bell. And if you want to support me further, you can do so on Patreon. Somebody else said the bold caster scaling bug was known to YouTubers since it was available. Why did it take until after another buff arranged on PVE to notice it and react? And here I want to cut ADS some slack. I'm not sure if I am one of the YouTubers being referred to here. The bug was originally discovered by Dragonflame, I think, 
who posted about it on the Discord and if their cousin told me about it and I made a video about it like four to five days later. I'm not sure if somebody else made a video about it way earlier and was talking about it already. But if not, then I think the criticism is a bit drastic because I think the reaction was fairly quick. So the devs are saying that the response was slow because it kind of happened over the holiday break, which is true, it was literally uh, talked about first uh, right before New Year's. And turning off a new artifact is a big deal to them, so they don't like doing that. Uh, they thought they may be able to avoid that, but the additional change that they added for ranged weapon scaling uh, made it too much. They also considered a failure on their team that they had to turn off the artifact, which are quite drastic words. Normally they don't use that easily. But then they said the bug would be fixed in the mid-January update, which I don't think it was, unless I'm missing something. Either way, while the damage of Boldcaster was of course increased a fair bit through this bug, I don't think that is why Boldcaster was so popular. It is a very accessible, easy to get bow, uh, with pretty much near best in slot perks at least, that has a unique damage type. And those factors will always mean that, especially in more casual modes like OPR, you will have a lot of people using it as long as it's good and functional. So once it's fully reactivated, I still expect a significant return. There were multiple questions about hackers and hacking. Uh, for example, an aim hack with a lock target, some tool that was being sold for 50 US dollars a month apparently since release and is still being sold today. And what they're going to do about that, as well as hackers in general. So first of all, they acknowledge and admit that there are hackers and they are detecting and banning them. Uh, they're not focused on shutting down external websites that are selling hacks, uh, but rather they focus on internal telemetry to detect, for example, aimbots. They're also working with Easy Anti-Cheat in order to detect hackers. And something that not every company does, they are issuing hardware bans when they find hackers, which I think is very interesting because obviously New World is a paid game, so even a normal ban comes with a bit of a barrier to return, but the hardware ban makes that a lot more complicated. They say that it is of course a cat and mouse game, that's just always the case with hacking, and they are applying a lot of resources to this. Bans aren't getting announced every time, especially when it's smaller groups that are getting banned. And bans are usually not immediate, but as ban waves to catch more accounts. This is very common in gaming, by the way, because you also kind of uh, catch certain behaviors and make it more difficult for the people that are creating the hacks uh, to basically reconstruct the steps. So there's a lot of logic behind that. They double check suspicious behavior with easy anti-cheat and sometimes they get the response from easy anti-cheat that uh, on their end they couldn't detect any malicious activity. So there are multiple steps to prevent accidentally banning people. When asked if they're going to do anything about the open world race imbalance, they say that individual races are much harder to control than the overall faction balance, which is okay, that just makes sense. And they don't really have any plans to directly change that other than the maximum cap for players on a spot. Uh, the teleport mechanic, the, the post basically said that it's not working as intended. Uh, they are saying that it's not meant to work for balance in the sense that if you only have three players, the enemy can also only have three players, but rather just a maximum there. They hope that people find races rewarding and fun uh, and that'll allow you to gather up more people. I think that's where one of the issues lies. I think that the rewarding aspect especially is just not there. In the beginning of the expansion, the gear that you can get from those races was actually very good and much better than what most people had. Uh, nowadays, getting anything good from that is near impossible. The faction balance itself is controlled by overlaying mechanics, like for example, not being able to transfer into the dominant faction. Uh, but they also said that group numbers aren't everything either. Uh, communication, coordination within groups is also very important. Sometimes you can have way less people and still win just because you have a more coordinated group. Personally, I want to add that most open world free for all content generally ends up being imbalanced in most games. That's often, not always, but often in the nature of this. And that's also why instanced PvP content is often so much po more popular because it's easier to have a form of balance there. When asked about the main story quest bugs, they said that those are a massive priority, which is why they already fixed many of the issues. And at this point, they have trouble reproducing the issues that still exist, especially since some of them are with returning players that haven't played for a very long time and stuff. So they are very specific. So they need specifics as to which ones are still bugged. They said, please reply to this wherever on Reddit or, you know, you can obviously post it on the Discord as well. Just let them know what is still bugged, where the issues are. Uh, there will be another small fix in the minor patch for one of the issues, but yeah, they're hoping to fix this as quickly as possible. 
There's also a bug that certain people can't see objectives when pressing J. That's also fixed at the end of the month. And they have confirmed that there will be more than two mutators per cycle. Once the group finder comes out, there will be three mutations going on at the same time. Unfortunately, there was no question about arena rewards. I'm not sure if anyone asked one. I unfortunately didn't see the Q&A in time. If you see the next Q&A and you have the chance, please ask them if they're going to do anything about arena rewards, if they're actually happy with what they did there uh, in terms of killing off arena in favor of OPR, even though OPR was still going before that. Uh, I'm really, really curious about that. I really want to hear what they have to say about that. Somehow I always keep missing the Q&As where we can actually ask that. There will also be a new balance of power soon. I will of course let you know when that's out, so consider subscribing and click the bell if you haven't yet. And if you'd like to support me further, you can do so on Patreon and get early trading tips in return. Thanks to my patrons who already do exactly that. And thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.